Hurry back, Angela. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to part. Oh, just a second here. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, welcome to part three of four of our um, design to manufacturing live stream. We're doing something a little bit different today, so hopefully this goes smoothly. Uh, today's topic is all about collaboration. Um, in fact, hopefully you'll see um, I have Angelo on also. And uh, we are going to talk about, you know, making some changes to this design. I'm going to start by showing some examples of how you can collaborate. Um, like I said, we're doing something a little bit different here. Um, we're basically sharing our screen with Aaron, and then Aaron's pushing it out to the live stream. So hopefully this goes smoothly. Um, if it doesn't, you'll probably see a new movie called Aaron Breaks the Internet instead of Ralph Breaks the Internet. Um, but hopefully this works. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and as you can see my screen, which is good. Okay. I want to talk about different methods of collaboration. Um, as we've been going through this four part series, um, I started out by coming up with the design of the spark plug and I showed how to model it. Uh, and then I saved it. And then the next session was with Angelo, where he showed how to add all of the tooling to the part. Well, in reality, we're going to we're working together, and um, there might need to be some changes that need to be made. And so that's why in part three we're talking about collaboration. Now this Thursday, make sure you tune in because part four is the actual making of the part. So we'll be at Pier Nine in uh, San Francisco. And we're actually going to show uh, these parts being manufactured. So make sure you tune in for that. Um, so 12 o'clock Pacific on Thursday. So right now you'll see that we have a project that um, is called Live Streams. And in here is the spark plug that I created and also the drawing. And we can see uh, what versions we're at on both of these parts. Now, if I go over to the People tab, we can see that I'm inside the project and so is Angelo. Now, I personally recommend creating projects uh, for, um, or a new project for the projects that you're working on. So for example, let's say you're designing the next Mars Rover. So you would create a Mars Rover project. Maybe you're working on the next Hubble telescope. You would create a Hubble telescope project. And in the People's tab, you can add in people to your project. So for example, I can invite um, Aaron into here because Aaron's going to be our, our project lead. Um, oops, let me uh, do this right. So I'm just going to type in his uh, email real quick and invite him into this project. Now, with that said, um, when you invite people into your project, they have access to everything inside of that project. So only invite people that you want in your project to have access to everything. So for example, I probably wouldn't invite, um, you know, my uh, manufacturer that I use down the road, for example. Um, I want to invite my my team lead, my team members, um, maybe somebody from marketing. Uh, those are the type of people you might want to have inside your project. Okay. So I just invited Aaron into there. And once he accepts the invite, he should show up into um, this project. Okay. There's another method um, that you can use. And that is if you want to share something with somebody um, that you don't want to have access to the whole project. So for example, uh, maybe my, the, my manufacturer down the street, uh, I want him to have access to this. I want him to be able to view it, to rotate it, uh, maybe make some markups on it. Um, but I don't want him to have access to all my other data. And to do that, I can right mouse click 
on my part or my assembly or my drawing or whatever it might be. And I can say share public link. Okay. And when I do that, it's going to bring up this menu here. And what you'll want to do is you're going to need to click this little checkbox right here. So I'm going to say like so. And you can see when I check that, it creates a custom public link. Okay. Now there's some other options. Right below it, it says allow item to be downloaded. And this is actually really cool. And I'm going to send this link to Angelo so he can sh share his screen and show you here in just a moment. Um, what it looks like to receive one of these public links. So I could turn this on or off. So I could tell it I don't want the item to be downloaded. I only want it to be viewed. Well, in this case, um, maybe I'm going to send this to my manufacturer and I do want him to be able to download it because maybe he wants it as an IGES file or a STEP file, uh, you know, an STL, something like that. Maybe he needs it in a different file format. I don't have to worry about what file format does he need it in because he's able to download it. And, and uh, Angelo is going to show this here in just a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, copy this link and send this to, uh, to Angelo. Now I'm going to copy it and paste it right inside of the Zoom that we're using. So um, give me just a second here. I'm going to send, send that to Angelo. So in reality, I would probably send it in an email. Um, and what's cool about this is this is a live link. And what that means is if I continue making changes to this model, like maybe I add a, a fillet or a chamfer to it or we um, put some notches or something like that in it, and Angelo doesn't open that link until next week, for example, he'll have the latest and greatest version. I don't have to keep sending new links every time I make a change. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing. And Angelo, if you have a chance to bring up that link, we'll so, see what that looks like. All right, can you guys hear me all right? Yeah, I can hear you, Angelo. So for some reason, uh, you are full screen and I can't. Okay, here we go, all right. Let me share my screen. All right, so tell me what you guys can see. I can see your fusion screen, so you'll need to bring up the web page. Yeah, so I received the link that you sent me, and I brought in, uh, I remember something. I need to make this not full screen. And then I could drag this in. So this is what it looks like. Uh, this is what you sent me. Okay. And so I can see the tool path and I don't even need fusion. Whoops. I zoomed in too much. I don't even need fusion installed. I can just view it here so I can look and see everything that I've done. So it's pretty handy. Yeah, and you guys will notice at the uh, the bottom of the screen, there's a lot of icons. So, for example, Angelo can do um, markups. He can take measurements. He could explode the assembly if it was an assembly. Um, so, yeah, here he's kind of just making a quick markup. Um, and so this is a great way to work with other people. And Angelo made a really good point. They don't have to have Fusion. They don't even have to install a an e-drawings viewer or something like that. This is all web-based. And so, you know, I could have sent this to my marketing manager and said, hey, here's what the new product design looks like. What do you guys think, right? And, uh, and he or she could even say um, something like, hey, let's make these out of aluminum or let's make them out of ceramic or whatever, right? Uh, and they don't have to install any extra special software. You'll also notice in the upper right corner is a blue download button. And when Angelo clicks on that, you can see all of the different file formats that he can um, basically get from the file that I shared. And this is what I was talking about earlier. 
you don't have to know what file format that particular person needs it in. Um, you don't know how many uh, people we've talked to where they keep an extra seat of Pro Engineer or an extra seat of SolidWorks just so they can convert a file format they, they might get from a vendor or something like that. Don't have to worry about that with Fusion. <coughs> Super cool, yeah. So if I wanted to email that, I would just click on this here and type in the email that I want to send it to the person uh, that's receiving that. So then I would just send it off. So it's quite quite handy and it's good. It, this is the way we share share files. It works out quite quite well. Yeah, and I should have had it queued up. Um, you can even, give me a half a second here, you can even view your files on your phone or tablet. So you could be like on the shop floor um, and you, you, know, you don't have to bring your computer or anything like that. I can actually search for this particular file right on my phone. I can view it and rotate it just like you're seeing on Angelo's screen. So, um, you know, you don't have to have drawings or anything like that. It's pretty cool. It is quite cool. Okay, so why don't you stop sharing, Angelo? Uh -huh. Actually, no, I lied. Why don't you, um, uh, we talked a little bit earlier, you mentioned there were some changes that we needed to do to this. And if you want to kind of explain what that is, we can see yeah. what we can do. Yeah, all right. So, let me just... I usually close this so I get more real estate. And so a couple of things, when I was doing this, I realized I didn't have the proper tool to do these, uh, this groove in here. And yes, I could use a parting tool, but the parting tool that I have on hand, I know it doesn't create a very good surface finish. So we could maybe omit some features here. And for what we're making, it's just a spark plug that's gonna go in your, on a keychain or on a pocket, in your pocket. So. Uh, it's going to be used as a bottle opener. So it doesn't have to be 200% accurate representation, but uh, so there's sometimes we can omit some features. So something like in here, maybe I would, uh, let me go into the design workspace. And a couple of things here. So my tool, I know that when I'm turning in this area, it can't drop down in there. And like I said, I have the tool I have in the machine, it doesn't, uh, create a great surface finish. So I'm just going to omit that feature. So a couple of things I want to do is maybe I'll extend that chamfer all the way down and maybe the same thing here. And it, it'll be fine for what we're doing. We're not doing an exact representation, but just trying to work with what we have on the machine. So what I would do here is I would uh, measure the distance between here and here. I could go in here and maybe make changes to that, but I'm, I'm afraid if I edit that, then the chamfer will start here and work its way back. But I want to maintain this cylinder here. So I'm just going to create a new uh, chamfer right here on this edge. And before I do that, I want to measure the distance between this edge and that edge. And if I look here, it's 80 thousandths, uh, the distance there. And then also over here, let me reset my selection. And let's measure from here to there. So that is 40 thousandths. So I'm just going to create a couple of uh, chamfers and the cool thing with this guys is notice at the top it's it's actually my part you know, and we're at version 7 and Angelo was able to because he's part of the project he was able to load this up and make changes to this model to make it work for manufacturing and when he saves this watch that version 7 go from v7 to v8 and he can add in a description, and which I highly recommend. It kind of helps you keep track of all your different versions. Like, what did you do between version 7 and version 8? So he just typed in, you know, added some chamfers or whatever. And you're going to see that that number now goes up to version 8. And, yep, there's, there's those comments. Um, so, in fact, notice on version 6, it says, you know, fix the lead collision, etc. And so as you get multiple versions, you can quickly see okay, we made some changes here. What did we do and why did we do that? Oh, it's right here in the notes. Um, another thing that Angelo showed on his live stream, which I think is really cool, is if Angelo expands open the comments down in his fusion right there, you'll actually see you can add comments into your design also. And I think this is huge. Um, a little bit of history. I came from the Federal Aerospace and Defense Arena 
So I've visited a lot of these customers, um, you know, like the NASA's and the national labs and stuff. And you don't know how many post-it notes I've seen with dimensions and notes and stuff like that. And I'm like, man, we put a man on the moon and brought him back alive. <laughs> how did we do that? Right. So with fusion, you can do it right inside with those comments. And so um, last time when, when Angelo was doing his live stream, he actually wanted to capture some data. What was the, uh, you know, the internal or the external diameters and all that kind of stuff. It was a really quick or major diameter, minor diameter. It was a really easy way for him to do that. So I recommend doing the comments. And if he, if you hover over that, you can see um, it says version two is when he created those notes. And it actually adds the notes to the version that you're currently working on. So you could have multiple different notes for multiple different versions. So um, a couple little icons in there, Angelo, if you don't mind hovering over the little camera, you can kind of see in the comments. Um, it'll allow you to take like a quick screen capture. So if he clicked on that right now, um, it just took a picture of that and he can add a comment in there, um, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's going to get captured um, in that particular orientation. So, and he'll post that and you'll notice it'll go to version eight instead of version two. So um, great way of capturing data. So thanks for doing that, Angelo. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, so I, I noticed you uh, made those chamfers. That's looking pretty good. So that's gonna save us some some tooling changes, right? Is that? Yeah, yeah, that'll save some uh, headaches in the shop to get the right tool in there. But yeah, that looks fine. Yeah, it still gets our design intent across. So anything else um, we well, should do before we send this to the machine? Yeah, yeah. So I was thinking, since this is gonna be a keychain. What if we were to put a hole somewhere here, like a one eighth diameter through hole right there, so we okay. can put a hole so we can attach that to like a key ring? And I'm gonna let you drive that. So okay, so you want me to do that? Yeah. So I'll stop my share, and then you can share your screen. Okay. Okay. So notice what happened on my screen. So it says data in this folder has been updated. So because, uh, notice I'm at version 7, Angelo made some changes, and you don't see it on my design. I'm going to go ahead and say refresh, and we'll see that that now says version 8. I can also come in here, and um, let me just go ahead and right-click on this guy here. And let me see. Oops, let me... See if I can find it here. I guess I can't see it right now. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and let me just close this guy down um, and update this one. So I'm just gonna open it up and it should have the changes to it. Sure enough, we can see there's those two new chamfers um, that Angelo created. We can see those at the end of the timeline here. And uh, Angelo said he wants to put a, a hole through here. so. Um, we could put like a chain or something like that through it so it's easier to find. So let's just go ahead and create a new sketch on this front view here. And I'll just throw a circle. And like I showed before, I, I kind of like to go off to the side and force it to be in line. So I'm going to say uh, 0.125. And let's go ahead and add a constraint. So I'm going to do a horizontal vertical like so, and I'll line that up with this right here. Let me kind of zoom so you can kind of see it's off center. As soon as I click that guy, we can see that that lined up vertically. So we've constrained it to be lined up vertically. Now I could come in here and uh, throw a dimension. So let's just go ahead and do a quick dimension here is 0.233. Okay, so I'll just do this. I'll say another dimension, like so. And I could type in 0.233 divided by two. And that will go ahead and center that for me um, in the correct location. So I could have used the measure command, but I find it just as quick to just do a quick dimension 
And uh, I canceled out of that dimension and was able to throw that one in there. So let's go ahead and machine this through. Now, I've shown this tip multiple times before, but I want to select this profile. So I'm going to go ahead and click on um, this by holding down my left mouse button. And I can say profile. So it's basically allowing me to probe through. So the very front thing is the face. Well, the next thing is the profile. So now I've selected that profile. It's kind of buried inside of that part. I'll go ahead and extrude this guy. And let's just go uh, symmetric. So I'll do something like that. Say OK. And I've just created a hole through there. So I'll go ahead and save this really quick and say uh, added hole for chain or something like that. And we'll see that that's gonna go from version eight to version nine. Now, like I showed earlier, um, Angelo has a dynamic link or a live link to this. And he might um, be on his iPad or his iPhone or whatever device looking at this. And maybe he has some feedback on this little hole area you could add that feedback in either the comments or in a markup or whatever to, to speed things up. Um, we're going to kind of simulate that. But Angelo, you, you have some feedback on this hole right here. Yeah, that hole looks, looks good. I like that. That's right in the center. And we'll be able to get a key ring on there. And yeah, I like that very much. It kind of adds to the functionality of that keychain. So you can attach it to something. So yeah, good job. I like that. Okay. And do we want to like add a, a flat or anything to it? Or you just want to leave it the way it is? Or chamfer? What's the best? Yeah, I'm limited on tools. So putting a chamfer on there, I mean, we could pop, probably add a flat. But to save time here, um, let's just leave it how it is for now. Okay. And we'll see what it looks like at the machine when we get it on there. Okay. So I'm going to um, add a comment in here. I'm going to... Um, basically send a message to Aaron saying, um, how does this look? You know, final approval or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and post that. Now, um, Aaron, because he's part of the project, would get that message. Um, unfortunately, he's quite active <laughs> making it as a producer right now. Uh, so he probably won't be able to respond, but he would get that message. And he could respond back saying, um, yep, looks good. Let's make 10 of these, um, make them out of aluminum or whatever. But hopefully you're kind of seeing the whole collaborative side of things with this, where it's not just one person that can do the design. Um, you know, I kind of came up with what the overall shape should look like. But when I sent it to Angelo, he determined with the tooling that he has in his machine, we needed to make a couple changes. And he was actually able to make those changes. Or he could have just marked up and said, remove this fillet and change it to a chamfer. We give you lots of options uh, with Fusion 360. I also invited um, you know, Aaron into the project. He can make comments. Um, you know, How much is this going to cost? Uh, how many are we going to make? Can you make it out of this particular uh, material, et cetera? Um, I could do a quick rendering and send it to my marketing guy and say, hey, do you want to advertise this on our Instagram or Facebook or whatever? So it's really kind of cool how instead of being just one person designing the thing, you can actually have a whole team. We're going to keep this one a little bit short. Um, we want to uh, make sure that you definitely... Uh, attend this Thursday's live stream. We're hoping to have a lot of fun with it. Uh, we're going to be manufacturing uh, a couple of these. And like we mentioned on one of the earlier live streams, uh, we're going to have a drawing where we are going to give uh, one of these away to one of you lucky people that attend uh, these live streams. So make sure um, you give us a thumbs up, uh, leave some comments in the, the comments field, not just in the little chat on the side. Um, you know, share with us uh, what's your favorite thing with Fusion? Uh, what's your favorite thing with these live streams? What would you like to see on future live streams? Um, we definitely read these comments um, and uh, add them to our list. Uh, we, we've been having a blast with this series. We hope to do more like this. 
And with that, we hope to see you on a future live stream. Angelo, thank you very much. I will see you here in Pier 9 in about a day. So Awesome. Perfect. Yeah. Hey, thanks, Brad. Yeah, it looks good. I like that. And uh, yeah, looking forward to machining this on cool. uh, Thursday. So we'll get the machine all set up and dialed in and show users how we how we do this. And uh, did you, I'm, I'm thinking, should I, where are we at on time? We're good on time, right? Yeah, um, I could add this hole now. Oh, yeah, you want to add to show how you would manufacture that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. so let me, so why don't you uh, stop your share and I'll share okay. my screen. And let me go here. And so I closed in. And I, what I want to show is me now on my end in the data panel. I'm opening, I got V9 now and I see your notes here. Perfect. And so now I've got that hole there and I'm just gonna go to the manufacturer workspace. And because there's been some, oops, there it is, a little bit of a delay. I need to remember we're, on a, <laughs> we're connected remotely. And so <clears throat> I wanna add that hole. And there's been some changes to the model anyway, so we've got all these red notifications. Uh, that's just uh, Fusion saying, hey, something has changed, we need to update the toolpath. So I'm just gonna right click and hit generate. And it should sort everything out. Now I've got some still red here, and what I think happened here when I, uh, when I added that uh, feature here, when I created the original toolpath, I think when I was in, yes, it's missing the reference. So when I, if you guys remember when I created this the other day, uh, I told it to start at the front and to end basically where that fillet was. Well, since I deleted that fillet, it now uh, lost that reference. So what Fusion is saying, hey, this operation has missing references. Do you want to clear those? And you can hit yes or no, so then they would be lost. But I'm gonna hit uh, no. I don't want to clear those, but then what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into here and it's saying the back reference, see it's missing. So I'm just going to clear that here and now I can do that. And so now it should generate that. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'll right click, I'll edit. And the same thing happened here. In this case, I'll just hit yes. And then all I'll do here on the geometry tab, the back reference is missing because I deleted it and again I'll click that and so I'll hit okay and that one is good uh, these I need to also regenerate uh, let's go generate this guy and that must also have a missing reference so again same thing if you remember uh, on third uh, on yeah last Thursday I started the profile here and I went back so I'll just need to go back and reselect these. So this is good so you guys can see this workflow. So it's saying the front reference was missing and I'll click, I'll clear that and I'll go here. Actually, I think I'll go, I'll start at the top right there and I'll have to do the same thing for here. Actually, that one should be good, yeah. So we're good. So we got no red notifications. We're good. And then now I'm just going to, I'm going to add a hole here. So let's just go here to drilling. And uh, I'll select my tool. And I have this tool that I had created. And that's just a one eighth drill. I'll hit OK with that. And then the first thing I need to do is tell Fusion what's the orientation. And I'll say that I want my tool normal to that. So now Z is pointing up. And then on the whole face, I want to drill that whole face. And if I look at it from the left view here, you can see that Fusion is smart enough on the Heights tab to go to the bottom of the hole. But what I want to do is drill the tip through the bottom and then also go like another 50 thousandths past. And if I want to do peck drilling or anything like that, this is just a straight drill in. Uh, but if I wanted to do a partial retract, I'll just leave it drill and hit OK. And there we go. I got some 
Uh, this is stuck on my screen, I think, because I'm connected to the internet. I got a little bit of a lag, guys. Sorry, that's covering the screen. There it goes, a little bit of a delay. Okay, so now I'm gonna put this right before I part it off. So I got the last profile, then I've got the drill, and then I've got the part off. So that's, cool. yeah, so that's how easy it is, guys, to to add features and just midstream make some changes. So, yeah, late, late design changes, so. Yeah, late. I mean, and, and that's what we were trying to show here, everybody, is that I could have made the changes, Angelo could have made the changes, we both could have made the changes. Um, it's it's pretty cool. We give you a lot of flexibility there, so. Yeah, so here I'm gonna show, and, and just I'm saving it, and in the notes I'm gonna put added drills hole in cam. And I'll hit okay. And then now it saves that, and it'll change the version here to version 10. And so there it is right there. It's quite cool. <laughs> oh, and then actually I should add this. We don't need to show it, but um, the drawing will now update. If I were to bring up the drawing, it, it would have a little icon saying it's no longer up to date. I could hit up to date and the hole would show up. Those chamfers would show up, et cetera. So um, because this is all in one tool, we're able to keep everything dynamically linked. So nice. Angelo, anything else you want to? Share no. or should we? No, I can't think of anything. Okay. So, so again, guys and gals, um, thank you for attending. Uh, make sure you leave a comment, thumbs up, thumbs down, um, what you want to see on future uh, live streams. This four-part series was, was actually because of you. We've, we had quite a few comments of people saying, oh, it's really cool to see how to design something in Fusion and how to create tool paths, but you never show going from the very start to the very end. And so that's what we're doing with this live stream. The part that's coming off the machine this week is the exact part you see on the screen. So uh, we're pretty excited about that um, and hope to see you again on a future live stream. Thank you very much.